love that punk rock at its core has this ethos of confrontation, this ethos of activism. You know what? Am I, am I rambling on? No, okay. Because you ate your cucumbers, do you want me to go get you more cucumbers? Um, yes, thank you, Boyanya. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. How can you not love Moby? <laughs> Welcome back to GMA3. That was a clip from the new documentary film, Punk Rock Vegan Movie, exploring the history that intertwines punk rock and animal rights activism. And it's also the directorial debut of our next guest, musician, author, and animal rights activist. Please welcome Moby. Thank you for being here. Hey. All right, so we should start by saying this documentary is free for everyone right now on YouTube, and that's just extraordinary. You explore punk rock, you explore veganism, but you say that that culture, that punk rock culture, is skeptical, and that actually opened the door for asking more questions. Yeah, I mean, because I grew up like I assume most of us did. I grew up in the suburbs in Connecticut, eating junk food and loving junk food, but also loving animals. And it just seemed normal to me that I would love the rescue animals we had at home, but also love pepperoni pizza. <laughs> and then when I was around 19, I had this realization. I was like, oh, if I love animals, I can't in good conscience be involved in anything that causes or contributes to animal suffering, um, which is not to judge other people's choices. I'm just saying that's a realization I had. And at the time, I was getting into the world of punk rock. And most people think of punk rock as anger and chaos. I mean, you look at Woodstock 99 and it's like, when people think of punk rock, they think of anarchy. But actually punk rock is skepticism, as you mentioned. It's questioning everything, questioning music, questioning fashion, but also questioning the food that we eat. Mm. And you actually, before I ask you about your album as well, I wanna talk about your neck, because as soon as I sat down, I noticed, can we get a close up of his yeah. tattoo? Yeah. It says vegan for life. Yeah. And I feel like you are, you've are you been a vegan for 35 years. Yeah. That's a long time. And that's quite a commitment to tattoo it on your neck. Especially because I got it when I was 50. Really? On my 50th birthday party, I was having dinner with some <laughs> friends and they asked me. And they me said, do you want to get a tattoo? And they're like, hey, you should get a tattoo. And I was like, you know what? What better time to get a giant neck tattoo than after your 50th birthday? Yeah. That's amazing. I love that. I do want to ask you about your album, though, because it's called Resound NYC. And it's coming out in May. It features some reimagined tracks. But I found this quote um, that you said. And you said, when you think of the 90s, back then making music was the celebration of the potential our world had. Do you still feel that way today when you're re-releasing these tracks, reimagining them? Oh boy, it's such a great question. And it's a hard question to answer optimistically because, I mean, I think of the 90s when I was writing a lot of these songs and like the world seemed so innocent. You know, the Soviet Union had ended and Russia was our friend, you know? China was enacting democratic reforms. Climate change was only the name of an Al Gore book. And now, like, since then, the world has gone to kind of a dark place. So I'm still, I'm very optimistic. I was talking to Cory Booker, who's an old vegan friend of mine, and we were talking about the famous Martin Luther King Jr. quote, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And it reminded us that the only thing that humans are better at than causing problems is fixing the problems that they've caused. So even though I know things are quite dark right now, I'm still very cautiously optimistic that we will figure out how to fix them. And just you, hearing you talk about certain concepts, thoughts you're having, emotions you're having, music, animals, all of those things together, when you re redid a lot of these tracks, did you have to go through a different type of emotional awakening than maybe the first time? I mean, music is such a fascinating way to sort of revisit the past, either listening to music or making music. but. For example, I live in L.A. now, but I'm from New York. And some of these songs were written when I was living in an abandoned factory and I had no money and I didn't even have a bathroom. I didn't have running water. And so being able to almost create this musical time portal to go back and remember what it was like in the early 90s when some of these songs were being written. It was really it's a it's a fascinating form of sonic time travel. Sonic I time travel. travel. I yeah. love that. What you can, you can trademark it. I, I, yeah. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much. We can't wait for the new album. So thank you so much for being here. And of course, you can go ahead and watch Punk Rock Vegan Movie. Again, it is free on YouTube right now. And look out for that new album, Resound NYC, coming out in May. A lot coming from Moby. Thank you so much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.